Exactly. So, okay. you know, I was, <clears throat> uh, I was thinking whether, uh, very many students of mine tell me that uh, they watch uh, old time movies and then, or they listen to radio and most of they tell me they listen to BBC World and any other BBC radio stations. And by doing that, they actually, they tell me they learn, they learn um, a language. And I was thinking of this while I was uh, going to Babel on my bicycle, and this is really important as I said in the mail because I do this almost every day. And uh, what I noticed was I listen to music every day. Every day I come, I go uh, on my bicycle. And uh, for almost like a month or two, I always have a certain playlist. And after a month or two, I change my playlist. So I listen to the same music every day. And I noticed a day that um, while I was listening to the same song, I could, I could already sing the same song using exactly the words that I've been listening to for the, for the last months. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that, okay, if I can do this only after listening to the same song like for two months, how can, how can students say that they can actually learn some parts of language listening to one radio show once using, using just uh, using that vocabulary only once a day. There is no repetition. There is nothing they hear repeatedly. Um, there is nothing they can use, actually, the language from there, and they actually might forget it. On the other hand, I listen to it every day, and I, I remember, the, remember the words, remember the expressions, because I, I listen to it every day, and I might as well use it, maybe later on in that day. But do you listen to music every day? Yes. That's Mm -hmm. yeah. So your question is whether they, whether it's effective if you only heard once something, uh, it's effective in you using that uh, later in your active vocabulary, like you heard once. Yeah, the same thing with movies. Is it, is it useful? Can you actually say that you, you can learn a language just by watching movies? Because movies are very... It's like it's a passive learning. It's for your entertainment. It's not necessarily for your uh, language, your use of language. I mean, you watch a movie and then what? Are you actually going to use the vocabulary from the movies? Mm -hmm. I'm really curious who, who has ever done that. And I think it's different for children and for adults. Maybe children are much more receptive and uh, intuitive, and uh, they can remember language uh, easier than adults at, at a certain age, maybe bef even before going to school, kindergarten? Mm -hmm. I think it's also a question of repetition because they tend to, to children tend to watch um, cartoons in a series or tend to listen to the same songs, you know? And it, I think it's very different what kind of movie, if it's, if it's a, a series or a movie a singular movie or a series or so what depends on what kind of movie do you do you choose to watch you know C can I, I join mm -hmm. yes um, as you know I learned English in Australia right so I would go to school every day from 9 to 2 o'clock I think and we would have formal classes um, and I remember wanting to listen to the language outside the school because I would always listen to my colleagues whose English was as bad or as good as mine. Um, and so I think it, that was the first time when I got a set of headphones and a little, I wasn't really little, a radio player. Mm -hmm. And I would listen to it and of course I couldn't understand everything because I had just been in a country for three months. But it's amazing how selective my hearing was, and I could recognize words. And then I could understand expressions, and then I could understand one line in a song. Mm -hmm. And then, but this took about six months. I could understand the whole song. So my experience at school with learning vocabulary, grammar, whatever we were doing, I'm not really, really, really 100% sure. Um, so I can't remember all of it. But this is something that I really remember. It's listening to the radio on the bus and feeling so much joy that I could actually understand what people were saying 
in songs or talk shows because that to me was like real life. Yeah. And I really wanted to to be able to be as fluent as those people who had or who were doing a talk show mm -hmm. because they had authentic language, the accent was right, they used all sorts of slang, and I really wanted to understand them. So school supported me with vocabulary, of course, and I'm really grateful for it. But listening to music or radio or just talk shows was like this extra thing. It almost like helped me fit into the, the current reality of the time because I could understand what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. and, and it was issues from that particular day or something. So I could... It's amazing. And, and I've been loving radio since then. <coughs> It's like staying up to date with what's happening and understanding. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. For my I'm students sharing. of uh, Dutch, I asked them what were important steps in their learning of Dutch. Okay. And uh, you know, they said that understanding things on the radio was a very important thing. And it is still a very important thing. Uh, and they could make the difference between understanding advertisements and understanding news. Mm -hmm. For different genres, that uh, it's easy to understand advertisements because they keep repeating, mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. they and it's uh, difficult to understand news because they are not there and they don't understand the context mm -hmm. of the news. Uh, so I think uh, somehow listening to the radio and understanding it's for pleasure and it's also a boost of confidence, like a test or something, of reality check. Uh, oh yes, uh, I am uh, like those native speakers who understand this. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily that you're going to learn a specific vocabulary uh, because you've listened once. Um, but I use, uh, with my students of Dutch, we watch together documentaries. So we say this week we are going to watch this documentary. and. It's just for the information, so just to think oh. in that language, to process the information in that language. Uh, and then vocabulary becomes, uh, you're not learning specifically vocabulary, but you're learning... Uh, lost you. And mm -hmm. Yes. And Hello. You're back. Hello. You're back. Matt. Hey. hey. Yes. yes. It's working. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I use this as um, as just uh, exchange of ideas in another language, and vocabulary comes because of that, not because I want vocabulary. I want just to talk about those ideas. So it's a support. Yeah. It's. I'm sure that. They can't express some ideas without a certain vocabulary, uh, certain ideas from that documentary. So they would need to have that vocabulary. But with music, it's something else, I think. Uh, at least I see it with Eric, that it's because of the repetition that it becomes, that specific vocabulary becomes active. Mm -hmm. Because he keeps watching the same Incy Wincy Spider and Bingo and then so oh, forth. And he this is how he's learning and he's producing language. So yeah. I don't know. I but think in, yeah. In a theory, for example, if you want to use to use movies, if you watch a um I don't know if a sitcom such a now, if you watch series, so it's the same, because I used to do this with Italian, for example, watching a sitcom. And it's how I learned Italian, because it was the same theme, and the vocabulary was, okay, it repeated itself. Mm -hmm. So it was the same thing as for music. So I think it, it, yeah, it works better for children, for cartoons, for example, or for, for music, because they are intuitive and they learn intuitively. But I think it also works for, for adults. And I don't, I'm not sure if it works without support, because I tried this for Hungarian. It worked for every other language I've learned. And I tried it for Hungarian, and it didn't work. And I'm ask, I ask myself, 
is it because I don't have any other support in Hungarian language? Mm -hmm. Because for other any other language, I had support, you know. Mm -hmm. I had either classes or doing courses <laughs> or I don't know. But then again, it's also the listener how much previous knowledge they have and how much they focus on the idea and how much they can focus on the language. Because, for example, when I speak to Hugh as a native speaker, I I hear only once what he wants to say, but I can pay attention to a certain piece of language and uh, say, okay, I want to learn this expression. Um, so I think it depends on whether you can uh, have uh, both ears, the content and the uh, language awareness here. If you, mm -hmm. uh, then you can transfer something in your active uh, knowledge. But also the passive knowledge, I, I think that's huge. I mean, uh, maybe you won't use those words the next day, the third day, the whatever, but uh, for example, my Dutch became so much better because I was, I didn't speak so much, I didn't have very many Dutch friends, but I was always listening to the, the TV was always on, um, movies were in Dutch, talk shows were in Dutch, and after a certain period, it showed in my vocabulary, I think. Uh, but not immediately. I wouldn't say that you watch a movie and then you suddenly speak better. But does does it work for every does it work for every for every person for every I mean I have this experience with Hungarian for me is very weird because I learned as I said I learned every language with the support of of movies or TV because I hadn't the opportunity to immerse in the language other way. I tried this with Hungarian, but without having any classes or dedicating time to do anything else in Hungarian. And uh, it doesn't work. So I'm listening to ra Hungarian radio and watching Hungarian TV for three years now. <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> and I'm the same person learning languages, you know. I don't know what the problem is. So. And I think it, it, will, it will never work just by listening to radio. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my question, yeah. That's, without I, I, any... Uh, so, from what I understood, <coughs> and as you've probably noticed, we lost Mirela. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> but what I understood, for example, from Mirela, that for her it is really important from a cultural point of view and as a boost of uh, vocabulary. So, from a cultural point of view, I understand this because they use certain type of expressions and slang. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, it's true. Which, if you are, if you're not living there. And then you probably won't understand jokes, political references, and things like this. And then you absolutely need a certain type of vocabulary to understand how people talk and what they actually refer to. And uh, while even while Moni, for example, said half of what Mira said, for example, it, it's, it is a boost of vocabulary. Uh, in the same time, uh, Moni also talked about the understanding, how it helps you understand the language a little bit better. So, for example, what I also do at IELTS, I give my students to listen to different types of radio shows and maybe different types of, uh, Diana talked about the TV series. I like that also because they have a certain type of vocabulary they might actually reuse, repeat in TV series, mm -hmm. but not in movies. And this is just one part. So this is just half of it, what you can do when you want to learn language. It's like, okay, you listen to the radio and you hear some of the words, but then you won't probably won't hear them again, only if maybe you listen to the same show every day on the same time. And this is just for understanding and maybe just mulling some things over in your mind, some of the words that you have heard, but then you have to put it into use. So you will have to use it with someone. You will have to talk to someone using those words, otherwise they will never, n you will never remember them. So just learning, for example, mm -hmm. just by listening to radio and watching television, and not using the actual language, the Hungarian, I don't think that will ever work. Um, I have, uh, there's a whole generation of, of children growing up with, um, with uh, either uh, cartoons in, uh, in German, there was a period where cartoon was, cartoons were in the Super Hotel in German, and then in Cartoon Network in English. And there are students now in the 
second, third, fourth year, and they come to us and they say they never had German classes. I'm talking about German now. And uh, they speak B2 or C1 German without having any classes, any, any language uh, um, instruction. Hmm? Language instruction. Language instruction without producing, the, they haven't talked to anyone. So, and they speak like B2 or C1 German, they don't know how to write. So they are like, <laughs> it's, it's not very complicated to write in German, but they don't know how to write in German. Okay, well. And I'm wondering, and, and, and they, say, they say it's not one case, there are many cases, and they say they, they have this, there was this gap, because okay, this was like, they were in the, I don't know, in, 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 in Scuola Generale, I think, so, or Elementare, and then they, they, there was a gap in German, and now they are students, and they discovered, okay, I know how to speak, um, how to speak um, German, and the same thing happened to me with Serbian, because I was watching Serbian cartoons when I was little, and I hadn't any, any idea that I understood Serbian, and I was going to Serbia, and I discovered that I understand everything they are talking, you know? So there must be the language, I think it's, it's somewhere there, and it, I don't know. But do you I think, think it works? How do you retrieve it? How do you? I mean, probably the, the brain records everything that is around, and uh, and passively you would understand more than you think you know. But uh, but they actually do this. This I don't know if they are special cases. I mean, maybe these are, are, are children who learn intuitively, but they actually use this language now, you know, and besides writing, it works. I don't know if it works for everybody. I think maybe these are persons who learn intuitively better languages. I don't know. But don't you think there's a difference between how children learn and how yes. adults learn? Yeah, yes, that, that is my, yeah, that's my, yeah, I think, I think that, that is, uh, yes, yes, that they learn intuitively and... Uh, they have their language acquisition device turned on. Yeah, turned on, yes, yes. yes. Until, uh, I don't know what age. Uh, Turns off, huh? Yeah, but uh, let me share with you how interesting uh, this um, thing from passive to active happened to me when I was studying for IELTS and I, yeah. Um, and I, what I did was I thought, okay, I will listen to BBC shows all the time, eight hours a day, and uh, I will speak like those people on BBC. And uh, I didn't only listen for ideas, but I also put down expressions and how to express your opinion and how, oh, wonderful language, wonderful language. And of course, when I went there, I didn't use anything, anything, anything. Uh -huh. you know? anything from all those lists, uh, but I went with more confidence that, you know, I have prepared. Because I don't know how you can prepare better than to at least aim to mind those people who speak uh, with very good language. Uh, and I tried to learn by heart those expressions, but still they wouldn't come. So maybe after five years I could I don't know, maybe I can use those expressions, but then at the right moment, so okay, I'm listening for eight hours and tomorrow I'm going and I'm going to use these expressions, that was a bit weird. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But if you talk to someone, because I was talking, uh, the, my, oh, our, during our whole trip, uh, sorry that Mirala isn't here, during our whole trip to, to Budapest, I was talking to Mirala in English. Uh -huh. And it was, it, it was getting, as a second day, it was getting easier to me to, to speak English and to use things she, because I, 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 the problem, the layer, and it was getting easier, you know? For example, on the train, for the first, uh, the train was like five or six hours long, the first time. Yeah. And <clears throat> because we stayed in one place, so I was uh, sitting next to Mira and uh, Jan uh, in front of us, and we talked English the entire entire way. So mm -hmm. the entire road is like six hours of English, mm -hmm. and obviously you get better at, at it. And uh, mm -hmm. normally, if, if if you repeat if you repeat the language and if if you keep talking, but even if you think about maybe you've seen. Me, Maybe you've seen a radio show right before, right day, day before, and you can use some of the language you've heard there in your, and you can try to use some of the language you've heard there in your conversation with others. I don't know if it's the same thing, this interaction and passive listening too. I don't know if it, if it works the same, you know? Because it worked very well during the workshop. I was very confident because of 
of, of using the language, you know, six hours in the train. Uh -huh. And it, was even, it wasn't planned, it was like, okay, it happened, it was wonderful. Uh -huh. And I, I don't know if it works the same, if you listen the day before, if you listen, although I tried it for French, for example, to listen to... Always when I, when I have French lesson, because I talk German every day, and when, before my French lesson with the children, I try to listen to French music just to get in the, you know... <laughs> And I don't know if it's the same. Yeah, it's, it's true. Uh -huh. It's true. It's very, it was very funny because I have I have French and then I have German. And one day I, I listened to French uh, music and then I went to French um, uh, course with the children and then I had German and I I um, I'm response, I I, answer. I I answered in French during my last course in German to the to the adults. You know, it, it was like okay, my brain wasn't. <laughs> But I, I think that every time you speak, every time you produce something, there must be some connection in your brain um, to a certain um, a certain vocabulary, a certain knowledge. And the more you make that connection, <laughs> or it could be done also by listening, but maybe not that strong, the more you uh, make that connection to that word in your brain, the easier it will be I mean, the faster the connection will be, and the faster you will speak, the faster that word will come to you. Uh, so I guess it's a matter of eventually repetition, but in how many ways you can have repetition. You can have repetition by speaking and using those words without thinking, but using those words. Mm -hmm. You can have repetition by listening to music like Rolly did. So the same connection to that word, then the word becomes active. And you can have repetition by, I don't know, just uh, even by reading, maybe you can have repetition. That by what? Reading. Mm -hmm. Reading, okay. Mm -hmm. you, you, you read, <coughs> because a lot of people, and you remember Crashers' experiment, that uh, uh, by reading people started speaking, and you don't consider that that's a normal relationship. Mm -hmm. You know? But it's. Yeah. Sorry. Hey! <laughs> I fell through. What happened? <laughs> it just died. <laughs> <laughs> it went black, blue, and then it restarted, and then... You resurrected. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Didn't give up. So keep going, sorry. Mm. Right. Now, the thing about that maybe also reading can have an impact on uh, your speaking somehow because you encounter the same words if you read something repeatedly or you encounter the same words maybe you can they become active somehow and you, you will be able to use them and I was saying that uh, I think it's a matter of repetition anyway and those words that you hear repeatedly, read repeatedly, use repeatedly in interaction become uh, your knowledge and not the words that you learn by heart and never repeated or have on a list and uh, All I, right. I so, agree with that okay mm -hmm. so I agree with that also I mean this is something that we, we do but you know what do you tell your students when you tell them alright you know go and read a book and Okay, he or she reads the book, but how will she or he be able then to use them the actual words? They read the book. Is I just the book tell is. them. Yes, I just tell them that uh, when you read something, there are easy words and there are difficult words. But uh, just because you see the easy words once again, or imagine that you see, um, I don't know, water, twenty times in that uh, in two pages that word water in your brain is ingrained mm -hmm. you will be using it actively um, just because there was a lot of input of that word and uh, I wouldn't say you will um, you will use that word instantly and you will have 20 words that you will use instantly but uh, just because you've exposed yourself to a lot of input for sure, the connections are stronger with some words. All right, but what about the unknown words? These are words like you know and you repeat them, or maybe you've heard and you know what they mean, but what about the new mm -hmm. words, the new vocabulary, the higher level 
I guess it's I, I guess because I know how children react to this because uh, when I when I uh, teach German I speak only in German with them and by repeating the same word in different contexts you somehow try to um, um, actually figure out what it means. We never when I was in 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 preschool not in pre I'm preschool also we never had dictionaries and also in in uno patro. We never had dictionaries, and we figured. I figured out. I never. I never was aware that there were dictionaries. I figured out what it meant, and then as I discovered dictionary, um, I found out. Okay, this word means this, but it isn't the same because there is a difference in German between English uh, in the translation. You, sometimes there isn't the right word to translate the exact meaning in in uh, Romanian. And I found out, okay, maybe this is the word, but it isn't. It describes not exactly what this word means. So there is a slight difference between the, the meanings. But I, I guess it's, this is how it works, that you try to figure out by seeing the word in different contexts what it means, when you don't have the translation. Okay. Can I tell you what it means for me? Of course. Um, I discovered reading, or I started enjoying reading as a later at, at a later age because <laughs> we'll not get into details. Um, but I started reading for pleasure, and so I know that when I read for pleasure, I skip certain words, and I might just read a paragraph and then make my own idea in my own head, mm -hmm. and so I make a summary of what I read. But every now and then, I come across words that maybe I don't know or I haven't seen for a long time, or words that I don't think fit in that particular situation. Uh, and these are the words that stay in my mind. And I might not actively use them for a long time, but when I hear them again, I know exactly what they mean, and I can relate it to that reading experience, relate them. Um, another thing for me with reading is, um, I don't think reading has a huge impact on my vocabulary because I'm not a visual learner. Mm -hmm. If you, as you know, you send me an email, and I might get three or four things out of it that might not be important. Mm -hmm. But this is what I see when I read, and I don't know whether it's related to the fact that indeed I'm just I'm a kinesthetic learner, or the fact that I started reading later in life. So for me, going through uni was really difficult because I had to do a lot of reading. Mm -hmm. um, um, so, I think it helps me revise more than actively use words in um, in day-to-day -day conversations. Um, but there's one thing that I always remember from reading is expressions, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like to get the hang of it, um, to get over it, things like this. Like jargon, collocations, idioms, things like this. This I remember. Everything else, mm, I actually made a, a mission um, for myself, which is whenever I read and I come across a nice a combination of words, or what I find to be a nice combination of words, I write them down. And so once or twice a week, I might just find my list and go over and go, oh, I like this combination. It looks really nice. So, I can't, I, I use them sometimes, but they actually stay at the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. So they're passive, but they're there. And you guys also talked about repetition. <coughs> I think repetition is really important in learning, because I think like first you see a word and you go, yeah, I know what it means, I know, and it also helps with spelling as well. I know how to spell it, I know where I saw it, and then you forget about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you hear it again, you see it again, that's why to me, because I learn better through reading, through hearing, if I hear this in a talk show or a presentation or whatever, I go, oh, okay, I've heard this before, I know what it means, I remember exactly when I learned it. So that's, that's how reading that, um, works for me. But repetition is important for me to actually have that word in there permanently and never forget it. Hmm. Well, when I, when I, I remember when I was reading um, in university, and what I used to do, and this was really something that I had time to do back then. I don't think I would have time to do it again. So when I was reading um, <clears throat> an English book, 
and it was mostly literature. Uh, what I did was I took, I had a separate notebook, like these huge ones, and I had a dictionary right next to me. Back then I didn't have a smartphone, so I had to actually use a dictionary. <laughs> and, you know, these large Macmillan ones, right, the really big ones. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> while I was reading the book, ev every time, I ev and I really mean every time I found an unknown word or an expression, I wrote it down in the notebook. So I had these um, 10 pages of words, one under the other. And when I finished the book, and I finished you know, my notebook with all the words that I had there, and I didn't know what they meant. So I took the dictionary, and I searched for all the words. And it's not just that I read the definition of the words. I actually wrote down the definition in my notebook. Oh, bro. <laughs> I wrote, I, so it's like I copied, you know, copied every definition from the dictionary to the, into the notebook. Wow. And for me, because I'm a very, in contrast to Mira, I'm a visual learner. And once I, you know, I, it's not just that I read them, but I read them again while writing them. So I read them and I wrote them, and in my mind I was reading them at the same time, and I did this like a lot. So af afterwards, uh, this was a repetitive uh, skill for me. I repeated using exactly the same word, uh, understanding the meaning by reading it, writing it, and reading it again in my mind. So it was something that obviously I, Israel, I probably didn't uh, manage to learn all the words from those ten pages, but like half of it obviously remained there. That's very useful for me. So I think it's kind of meaningful repetition and the fact that each of us has found uh, his or her way to repeat in a meaningful way, I think that's very important. And maybe students need to find their own meaningful ways of repeating because we keep giving them, uh, okay, you could do that, or you could do that, or you could do that. But at the end of the day, they find what works for them. Uh, and I think it's an interesting question, and it's an interesting discussion also in class, because once you find your the meaningful way in which you can, <coughs> uh, I think uh, your progress can be huge. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good, but in order to do that, you actually need to give your students options. So you need mm -hmm. to say, you need to know. All right, you can do one, two, three, four, five. It's not just you can do this because I've done this. Yeah, but I also ask them how how do you do that? Because I when I ask my students of uh, Dutch Alfel, uh, you know, I was amazed at what they were doing without any counseling from me. Uh -huh. you no, know? because nobody told you Roland how to do that with the words. You discovered it yourself. I know. And maybe they also have their strategies, and we keep telling them, okay, you could have that, and you could, and none of them fits them. But maybe they have their own secret strategy that they don't want to share with you because they're afraid. Maybe <laughs> but it does not fit <laughs> the teacher's uh, program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think it's really interesting, and it's worth spending uh, time on just to um, uh, to to help them find this strategy that works for them. Uh, and uh, encourage them to, to, to do more than repeat the grammar and do the exercises in the notebook, uh, because we all know that <laughs> that's not the only, I mean, that's not how they're going to make uh, uh, the, the greatest progress, because this is not what we did to have the greatest process, pro progress. And ask each uh, good speaker of a certain language and they will tell you it was not the grammar exercises that made me uh, speak the language like this, mm -hmm. it was something else, either an experience in that country, immersing yourself in the language, uh, reading, uh, uh, and there's a turning point for each of us, uh, I think, when we found somehow our own strategies to keep on learning the language to, to and it, it is connected somehow to our passion, so for, for me it's music as well, for Roland it's music or reading or uh, series or... Um, and it's okay to, to find your own strategy, not the teacher's strategy, it's everyone's strategy. So I, I agree with that, but I'd like to go, regarding this, I'd like to go back to a point where you talked about passive and active learning while mm -hmm. listening to radio and watching television, TV series mm -hmm. or movies. So. 
by giving them choices or actually asking them what they do and uh, letting them find out on their own. So if you're listening to radio and or watching TV or movie, um, what kind of options would you say do students have in order to not to not to have a passive learning but to have an active learning? What is active learning for you while using media? What options do you have? What do you understand mm -hmm. between the difference between active and passive learning? Because I have I have an opinion but like to hear yours and then maybe we can compare. Mm -hmm. Or would you like me to start? I'll have to actually think about it. Because for me, it works really well, listening to the radio, watching a movie, because I'm hearing it. Or using it afterwards. Uh, oh, I'm using it. Like, it makes sense in my head. That for me, it's much easier to, to, to learn it that way. Mm -hmm. It just sits in there. But was it like this also when you started learning the language? Or yeah. is it now after, like, after you speak fluently and you've been No, there? no, no. It's always been like that. Mm -hmm. um, I always struggled with written stuff <coughs> and reading things, always, and it was really difficult. So I could sit somewhere and listen to someone talk for mm -hmm. hours and I will filter it through. And there's a whole process that takes place in my head. And I mean, it would take a whole day to explain to you exactly how it all happens. Mm -hmm. But something makes sense in my mind and I can link ideas. So maybe that's, maybe you look passive or maybe I look passive but there's a lot of active stuff happening in my mind. Mm -hmm. And what happens, it's like, there's this little man in my brain, and it just goes and takes an idea that I've heard then, and connects it with one that I've heard then, and then, and then, and then, yeah. and they go together. And so, mm -hmm. and that usually happens when I watch documentaries, for instance, or something um, that's about um, education and research or something that's about cooking or something that's related to Chinese medicine which I'm very passionate about or just listening to people talk about their health problems I go okay I'm hearing this and this and this and there's a connection for me and with movies it's it's the same kind of thing and like I said I hear structures language structures mm -hmm. and then again this little man goes oh you've heard this before then and then and then and then Oh, and so because there's always something spinning in my mind. Mm. I don't know if it's really good or really bad. You were talking about things you're passionate about and you like, but for example, mm. like telling my students if they're B2 and C1 or if they want to, you know, strive for C2, I keep telling them they somehow need to listen and watch things they might not like because that's a challenge for them. And they will always be able to use the vocabulary that they already have because. Mm. They are using vocabulary that in um, about things they are passionate about. What about the other things? What if they are in a situation when they will have to talk about some things they have never listened to because they thought you know they are not interested in it? But they might be I know at a conference, right? And they might have to talk about some things that other people are passionate about and they are not. And if mm -hmm. they don't have the vocabulary to enter the conversation, what would they do? Are mm -hmm. they going to freeze in the moment and just not see anything? Or are they going to, you know, enter the conversation and express their opinions? Is there something that they can do in order to help them achieve this? Or do they just have to listen and talk about passion, the things they are passionate about? I don't think there's always, that's always an option. And it would be quite nice to have the option to always talk about only what you're interested in. Um, and I can only give you myself as an example. Mm -hmm. I sometimes just watch things that have nothing to do with my interest. Mm -hmm. And I always find it interesting. Mm -hmm. And for me, technology is like, what? <laughs> but I, I listen. I watch, I listen. And then eventually I do learn something. I, there is something that I connects with me on a certain level. And so that's my starting point or my entering point into a conversation. Mm -hmm. So I think at the end of the day, it's a matter of attitude. And, and I know this for sure in my head. Whenever I hear something, whether it's something I'm interested in or something I'm not interested in, there's always a, a, a language connection or some knowledge that gets connected in my mind, always. Depends on your attitude, I would say, because uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I hear uh, some discussion about bicycles, for example, or uh, cars, or uh, I don't know, 
things that some people are really passionate about. I just look at them and they're passionate, but I somehow block the information. And I think that's not, I mean, I don't need to have that in my brain. So, um, But it's a matter of attitude if you want to learn all the time on any topic or if you want to block the learning for some topics because you say, uh, that's not my, my thing. And I think we do that in Romanian as well. I mean, uh, these conversations are in Romanian, not in English. But uh, when you hear lawyers talking or uh, financial specialists talking, you can say, well, that's not my piece of uh, expertise, I'm not interested. Or you can try to understand, but really it's a matter of attitude and how much you want to to know, how much you want to learn. And uh, I don't think that can be pressed on students and say, you have to be interested in that and that, uh, because one day you will have an exam and... Uh, Mm -hmm. There is a difference between you have to be interested and you have to be challenged. You have to challenge yourself in that and that. So I'm not saying they have to be interested in this and that, but they have to challenge themselves in this and that from time to time. Mm -hmm. I, I will give you a little example. It's just an observation. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes back to my interaction with my friends in Australia. Mm -hmm. There's always someone who does something new. Mm -hmm. That might not be interested, interesting to everybody. But there's this unwritten rule, custom, habit that you listen. You just, you kind of listen. And then I've also learned from native British people mm -hmm. that it's nice to, to go on with a conversation if someone's really excited about something. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how much I opened to other people by just practicing this, by just saying, oh, that's really interesting. Oh, so you've just bought a new bike. What What's new about a bike these days? <laughs> I, Because when I was riding bikes, when I first rode my, my bike, it was just, you know, two pedals and you had to pedal backwards to stop it. And oh. and then you, you hear different things like handbrake or, you know, um, headlight. No, 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 no. And I learned a lot this way. So I what learned a lot. I have to ask a question. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, but this is a, a, a thing that my Australian friends do. Uh -huh. It's just something that they just do. So it's perhaps also a cultural thing. They show interest because why not know? Why just say I'm not interested? And then if it gets too much, you also you, you can also say. And they say, okay, this is a bit too much for me. Enjoy your bicycle. And maybe one day we'll go for a ride together, mm -hmm. or just have coffee and talk about something else. So, mm. just an observation. Yeah. But I do agree that you shouldn't force people to do things they don't like, mm -hmm. or read things they don't like. But at the same time, okay, have a go. Mm -hmm. and, but at least if you are interested in what you give them to read, and you can say, well, it's a good reader. Uh, or what is I don't know. I uh, that's in my experience. If I am very very interested in something like uh, in a documentary, and I explain why, uh, and I say, well, it would be really nice to have a discussion about it because I'm so interested in this, and I think it would be interesting for you as well. And I'm curious how you feel about this. Uh, I think there must be just a little bit of feeling there. Besides, you have to. Uh, mm -hmm. Just a little bit, somehow. If it's not from them, maybe from you. I, I don't know. But uh, um, if it's not interesting for me, if it's not interesting for them, I don't see how material could uh, be used. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's yeah. I think it's the same with like the friends I described. If they, they feel comfortable in, in, in the in, in this group of friends and go, Hey guys, you know, I've got a new bicycle, I really need to tell you about it. Um and then you automatically listen because you're attracted by the um, enthusiasm. And of course I think that works really well in your classroom as well. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, so someone who might find it completely boring might go, oh, okay, well, mm, I'll give it a go because it means something to someone else. Well, I was when I was, um, for example, my my take on the difference between active and passive learning was, for example, there is a difference while just sitting on the couch or wherever you are and watching a video or 
listening to the radio and passively somehow rehearsing the language and um, uh, you know going through it and trying to remember it it's something else than let's say what I sometimes um, advise my students to do so for example I tell them okay you want to watch a movie and you want to listen to the radio and learn something while doing this doing that I recommend you know go home take uh, something to write with uh, or you know take your tablet or your laptop or whatever and while you're watching the movie or listening to the radio jot down some things and mm -hmm. it's not necessarily vocabulary it depends on what you want to learn so I tell them for example if they watch a movie when the movie is finished you know write down the plot of the movie and then go to imdb.com and check the plot and see if what they wrote is similar to what you wrote mm -hmm. and if your understanding was the same as the actual plot was so did you mm -hmm. actually understand the movie? Was it was your understanding correct or not? And mm -hmm. that's for understanding, that's for summarizing. Or you can ask them to actually write down certain types of uh, <coughs> uh, obviously expressions. You can ask them, okay, watch a British movie. Or ask them, are you watching British movies? Would you like to watch one? Or are you watching American movies or European movies? Mm -hmm. Then write down some of the expressions that they use in that movie. Why was, it, why was that important for that certain movie? Could that be used in any other context in your life and things like this? But mm -hmm. they would actually have a certain type of, like, we have the portfolios, right, in our classes. This would be their vocabulary portfolio when they're using media. They would have a notebook with certain types of expressions for different types of contexts. So they have this expression, use that, use, I don't know, when, when you're in a bus station or an expression when you're in a church or when you're in the hospital or, and so on and so forth and they would know when to go back and use those things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do they do that? Some of them, yes. Mm -hmm. if, you, if I tell them, but if I, for example, I have never heard my students ever, you know, come up with saying that, you know, I, will, I am doing this. Because for them, watching movies and listening to radio means that only. It doesn't mean, for me, active learning is something else. For me, active learning means you're not passively listening and watching to some uh, watching something. You're actually doing something in the meantime. So you can pause the movie. You can write down some things that that are interesting for you. You know, things that you think you will use afterwards, or use them in the meantime. For example, you can you can watch movies together maybe with your uh, friends or girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife. I know, and then talk about the movie in the same time using some of the words. But if you don't do that, I don't think it's active learning. I, I never be active learning. It's passive learning, which is much. Uh, it, it's it's easier forgotten than active learning. Active learning is something that remains with you. It's you're working on it in the meantime, and then afterwards you can use it. Yeah, but when you watch a movie, you don't feel like learning. I mean, that you're in a learning situation. You're in an entertainment. Exactly. That's why. And it's like reading for pleasure. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. That is passive learning. Thought, uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> I think what we need to train is not that uh, every pleasure is a learning point, but uh, this love for language and language awareness. What Mirella said that she does with, uh, you know, I like how it looks, you know. Um, and uh, what I told that when I speak to Hugh, I, ooh, I like that, you know, it's, uh, uh, and this is, an, again, an attitude thing, uh, to, to, to love the language, to, to, to have it as a partner, not as a tool, um, you know, and to be amazed that, wow, this is, exp you know, and you can't, um, if I manage to train that in a in a student, I think he's a lifelong learner and a future active learner and whatever. If I manage to train this, ooh, I like this language and I like this expression and um, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's a skill that's gonna stay with them forever and we'll have them learn. And we need to have that in Romanian as well. I'm sure we don't. Some of us, most of us, don't have it. To, to love the language and to say, wow, I like this word. Uh, it's, 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 difficult. Yeah, it's difficult to train this with people. that We, we all have passion for, 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 for the word and for the language. and for It's very difficult to train this with people that are not really interested in engineers and who don't find a link. It's like me trying to 
find the beauty in an, in a thing that's related to math or I don't know. And that's why I think it's very it's it's very useful to try to link that that I don't know like these things through their passions, you know, not through language itself. Mm -hmm. To get to them through their passions, so not to the actual like the word, but to I don't know how to put this. Mm -hmm. I think have, I can understand. Have you ever tried this? Have you ever asked your students whether they, you know, jot things down while listening to the radio or watching movies? Have you ever? I asked? I always do this, but I try them to get to to find passion in listening to the language uh, <laughs> by trying to find things that they um, that they enjoy. For example, for engineers, try to them to get I don't know, try to read something in uh, about their stuff, you know. To get to the language, not directly. Okay, I like the language. I'm, I'm, I, I love languages. I try to, you know, trying to find their passions and link through their passions, and then get to the passion of loving the the language and the words, not directly to them. Yes, of course, but engineers like music as well, and engineers for example, for example, yes. connected to language, but they don't yeah. call it language. They like movies. Movies have, I think, everything has language. Manuals, uh, computer manuals have language. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have. You know, one of my yes, I was not not uh, sorry sorry not uh, I was I was trying not to try to the necessary to their um, messeria. I don't know. Job, but to their, to their job, but to their passions, to their passions. Yeah, you're right. Not necessarily right. to their job, but to their passion. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, share your passion with them because this is kept contaminating. You know, uh, they don't have to be the same as you, but they could be a at least say that in their lives they see somebody who is passionate about language. <laughs> Alright. Well, I could just say one thing about this. Um, I think that if I did what Roland advised about listening and watching a movie, I could probably learn German in like six months. Uh, but I know I don't do this because I am comfortable and I am lazy. Okay? And it takes a lot of effort and that's why I don't do it. I'm not saying that this will not match some other people's um, goals, objectives, etc. I think it's a great system, and I wish I had that discipline. I really do. And also, uh, for example, if you're in a course and there is a teacher who can help you with that, give mm -hmm. feedback on what you're doing, you know, in the in the system, and it's even mm -hmm. it's even easier, even if you're a comfortable person. There's mm -hmm. <coughs> can help you and give you some more advice. Mm. I mean, I I strive for that kind of discipline. It's like a life goal. I still strive for, you know, other things that I want to do every day and get better, but I don't manage to do them. Um, but an interesting thing, again, it's an observation because, as you know, Max, Max's first language is German, and he learned all. He's never had one formal class of English, mm -hmm. so he learned it all through playing games, okay. listening to the, to music, talking to me, and. And we do this thing with movies, like we watch a movie and sometimes if it's too hard for him or sometimes for me because I'm just tired or whatever, um, when we watch a film we might put the subtitles on. And I think that when you have the subtitles on that also brings up a second skill. Um, so you listen and you read at the same time and there's an extra connection which I think is active. I think that's also active learning in a way that mm -hmm. it activates two things that are, so two things are happening actively at the same time. Because you have to match what you hear with the word that you see and still have a general comprehension of what's happening. So we do that sometimes, which I've told my students to do, and, and most of them find it useful also for pronunciation. Uh -huh. um, and the second thing that Max and I do is, <clears throat> before we watch a movie, we might read the plot quickly or just see what, what it is about. Mm -hmm. We always have a discussion at the end. Uh -huh. Or sometimes we need to stop the movie because we we might not understand a particular sentence or exchange of replies and we go back and we go, what? Really? Is that what they said? Oh, I missed it the first time. Yeah. Go on and you wonder how many other things have I missed? 
Um, so I guess this is also active learning, but we do this because... Yeah, but Max has you as the native speaker there and can train this, so not every... It's very nice. But there, there are times when I don't understand everything, mm -hmm. and I have to go back. And I notice it happens in Romanian too. Mm -hmm. There are times when I, I really don't get it, yep. and I have to go again, and sometimes, you know, I can understand the most complicated things, and sometimes the simplest of things don't get through. So, no, I, so we, active. we did this, for example, with my friends. Uh, it, was, it was the season finale of Breaking Bad. I, I don't know if you know the TV series. And uh, we watched it together, and we were like, I think, seven friends here uh, in, in my apartment. And from, I think twice during the 40-minute long show, we paused, we paused the movie and then talked about it. Right? Mm -hmm. well, you have to leave. Um, guys, Bye. I have to say goodbye. <laughs> yeah, me too, in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Really. All right, we'll end the discussion immediately. Then. Okay, then I'll wait. I don't want it to end because of me, but... Uh, Nira has to go also. I have to go because we have to have breakfast, and, and Max woke up at four in the morning to bake bread, so... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sell some bread via Hangout, please. <laughs> <laughs> if that That's the were, only that problem with Hangouts. <laughs> Hang on. You can't smell the bread at Mirella's house. <laughs> Hangout at Mirella. <laughs> <laughs> well, next time. In, in different rooms. <laughs> uh. All right, may, maybe I can try and conclude somehow then. Um, yeah, yeah, that would be good. I think, I think from, why, from what I understood is that... Um, you know, uh, listening to um, watching movies and listening to radio, and in different types of media like TV series, movies, and radio programs, it can either boost your vocabulary, as far as I understood from you guys, and or help you in a cultural way from what Mirla said when being in a foreign country and being able to understand different types of expressions, slang, and so on and so forth, mm -hmm. which obviously help you in your day-to-day -day life. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and uh, while, uh, you know, making a difference between active learning and passive learning, you always should have a choice. As, as Moni said, you should ask the students what they would like to do and then maybe give them some options if they, if they lack, lack options and they don't have really any ideas. And in that way, maybe they can find out some new ways how to um, put their put their vocabulary which they learn and see and hear from different types of media into use. And mm -hmm. maybe they can learn different different ways. And this is what I understood from the conversation. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe you understood something else or is there something you'd like to add? Or ask? No, I liked your conclusion. Wow, I'm quite impressed with that conclusion. I don't think <laughs> I could have done it that well. <laughs> so. I also would like to add the fact that yeah. we all know people who have actually learned the language yeah. without instruction and uh, especially those who watched uh, cartoons uh, when they were young and played computer games and so yeah. on. You shouldn't exclude that at, <laughs> as a language uh, uh, learning um, possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that maybe we don't understand now and maybe we can do, do some more research about how our brain works and what is passive and what is active. Because mm -hmm. I like Mirella's uh, thing that a lot of things happen in her head even if yeah. she not down things. And the little men that work around him. Yeah. Yes. So maybe our, uh, our um, image of what is active and what is passive can uh, be... Uh, <laughs> more in detail if uh, we do some research about what happens actually in the brain when we oh live. God. <laughs> yes, oh. and how, how is uh, the language transformed from uh, just the uh, language that is heard and understood to language that is actively used? Because I'm not sure I have the answer for that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know how it was for me and what I hear from others, but maybe there's research. People who have time to write about it. <laughs> and people who have time to read it. Exactly. Who <laughs> have time to read it, yes. Sorry. All right, guys, it was lovely talking to you. I'm really glad that this Google <laughs> Hangout thing worked. Me too. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you very much for joining. I think this is great. So I actually enjoyed this a lot, and I, and I actually learned some of the things that you said. I mean, some of the ideas you shared. I think they were great. Yeah. So thanks. Cool. 
Bye, guys. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Nice. Thank you, thank you, great idea. Bye bye. How do I hang up? I, I, I <laughs> but you have a button in the right, right top corner, you have an exit. I got it. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye. bye.